Welcome back to another week of Physics 40B. My name is Richard and this week we will revisit but go more in depth about the macroscopic and microscopic connection, which is chapter 20 in the textbook. In this video, I will cover the microscopic origin of pressure and its derivation, the root mean square velocity, and temperature and kinetic energy. Since this chapter is mathematically complex, I will try to break down each slide by going over what we know and what we can solve with what we know. I have also color-coded several equations that are important for you to keep track of where they appear throughout all the slides in this video. With that being said, let's begin. A few weeks ago, we briefly discussed about the examples of the microscopic motions and interactions and how they connect with the macroscopic properties. However, we did not dive deeper on this topic, but instead transitioned into the fundamentals of chemistry. This is just a reminder of what those examples for each of these classes are. For gas molecules inside a container, we know that the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, shows us an empirical formula re relating the three macroscopic properties, pressure, volume, and temperature. But if we consider looking at a microscopic level, how different would that be? If I look at one gas molecule inside a container, the gas molecule itself can collide with a wall inside the container and experience some change in momentum. In this case, we are considering two points in time. The first point is before the gas molecule collides with the wall, and the second point is after, as shown in the figure. To simplify things, we will only focus on the gas molecule moving in only the x direction. Notice the velocities are assumed to be the same magnitude, but are in opposite directions. Calculating this change in momentum results in negative two times mass times the velocity in the x direction. For the total change in momentum, this change in momentum would simply be multiplied by the total number of collisions of gas molecules inside the container as shown in yellow. But how can we determine the number of collisions? Referring to the image below, the shaded region is a volume, which is equal to the length delta x times the cross-sectional area of the container. Since a ratio of the total number of gas molecules pass through the shaded region, this ratio is to be considered as the number density. Remember, the number density is the total number of gas molecules divided by the entire volume of the container it is enclosed in. The length delta x may also be rewritten by the product of velocity and time in the shaded region, which is just bringing up back kinematics. Finally, the one half in the equation makes the assumption that only half of the molecules are moving to the right side of the container. To remind ourselves what we already know, I have dis displayed them here. As we have learned from Physics 40A, another way of representing force is the change in momentum per unit time, which is equation three. Combining all three of these equations together, we obtain a new equation for the force on the wall. Other things to remember is Newton's third law, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In this application, the force on the gas molecules is equal to the op and opposite to the force on the wall due to the collisions. Additionally, from fluid mechanics, we stated that pressure is equal to force per unit area. For the pressure on the wall inside the container, due to all the collisions, the three equations above combine to become the pressure equation that is in blue. In any 3D Cartesian coordinate system, we always have three directions of, for any vector. To determine the average velocity in this 3D system, we just take the squares of each component in each direction, sum them all together, and take the square root. 
In this chapter, we are introduced to the root mean square speed, which is basically the average velocity of all gas molecules inside a closed container. To simplify things, we can assume that the velocity in each direction is the same. Using this information leads us to the equation in red. Revisiting the equations for pressure and root mean square speed from the previous two slides, we can combine them again to create another equation of pressure in terms of the root mean square speed, as shown in purple. Remember, we learned that the ideal gas law has two variations for the equation, PV equals NRT and PV equals NKBT. Both of these equations still relate to the macroscopic properties together. I will isolate the equation in orange for pressure, as shown by equation one. As for the macroscopic level or microscopic level, we had derived the pressure equation in terms of the root mean square speed of the gas molecules inside the container. Setting these two pressure equations together results in a new equation for root mean square speed as shown in pink. It is important to note that there are two factors that influence this speed, temperature and mass. This should make sense because if temperature increases, the gas molecules vibrate a lot more, move much faster, and bounce off the walls with greater momentum. Moreover, the smaller and lighter uh, gas molecules are, the faster they will also move inside the container. Looking at the two equations for pressure once again, we can set them equal once again, but manipulate the equation to isolate for one half mv squared. We should be familiar with this since it is the equation for translational kinetic energy. What we can get on the other side of the equation is 3 halves times the Boltzmann's constant times temperature, which is just another way of saying kinetic energy as well. Specifically, it is the average translational kinetic energy of a gas molecule. So that ends part one of chapter 20, macro and micro connections. Hopefully you learned something about the microscopic origin of pressure, as well as the root mean square speed and kinetic energy. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below or stop by our SI office hours. The times will also be in the description link below. Thank you for watching and take care.